In this episode, install Ubuntu on Google's CR48, TinyCore 3.4 has been released, and SME Storage updates Linux cloud tooling. You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise, a proud member of techpodcasts.com. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 11, Episode 18. From Infotech over at it.tmcnet.com, SME Storage updates Linux cloud tooling. SME Storage updated its Linux desktop cloud tooling to include a rich desktop synchronization tool. The service provided by SME Storage works above many different storage clouds and enables users to manage their files through the SME Storage web platform and desktop and mobile tooling. The Linux desktop cloud tooling provides a virtual cloud drive and now a synchronization center where desktop files can be kept in sync with cloud storage services. So uh, it works with all many of the popular cloud storage services out there, including Amazon S3, Google Docs, Google Storage, Rackspace Cloud Files, Microsoft Microsoft SkyDrive, et cetera, et cetera. This is pretty neat stuff. Uh, By all means, check it out. From hOnline.com, TinyCore Linux 3.4 arrives. TinyCore lead developer Rob, Robert Shingledecker has released version 3.4 of TinyCore Linux. Based on the 2.6.33.3 Linux kernel, TinyCore Linux 3.4 features a variety of updates, including additional options in the mount tool, which is kind of nice. Um, so TinyCore is exactly what it sounds like. It's a tiny version of Linux. Uh, 10 megabytes I think uh, they've got it's less than 10 megabytes so uh, really tiny Um, you know it's it's primarily for uh, either very old machines or for uh, you know recovery type operations where you just need something small to get in there you know obviously as with many things the less code you have the faster it runs so uh, this is pretty good stuff from Stockhouse.com, NEC and Novell deliver high availability solution optimized for SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. NEC Corporation and Novell has, have announced the immediate availability of a high availability and disaster recovery solution optimized for SUSE Linux. Uh, designed to enhance availability and serviceability in mixed operating system and hypervisor environments, NEC Express Cluster X 3.0 is now certified for and supported on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11. First available in Japan, the new solution represents an expansion of the partnership between NEC and Novell to deliver mission critical services to joint customers worldwide. As a result, it is now easier for IT organizations to ensure business continuity for environments containing both Linux and Windows workloads. So this is pretty good stuff. If you're an Express Cluster user or a SUSE Linux Enterprise Server user, this is worth looking into. From Linux Planet, I saw this article, and it, since it's such a light news week this week, I said, let's go ahead and include this. It's it's a how-to on uh, setting up remote graphical desktops on Linux, um, basically setting up an RDP server and client in Linux. Uh, it uses XRDP. It goes through all the settings on how to get this all working. So uh, if, if that's something you want to do, this is a really, really great how-to. Um, check it out. Another how-to article uh, I ran into over at lilyputing.com, primarily because it's it's just a really light news week this week for in Linux land, uh, which is understandable. We're coming into uh, you know Christmas week here, Christmas weekend. So um, one of the things that I, I saw, Google recently released their uh, CR48 Chrome OS notebook, and uh, Lily Puting here has an article on how to install Ubuntu Linux on the CR48. Chrome uh, notebook or netbook, if you will. Um, this is uh, pretty cool stuff. You know, I, I thought it was, uh, and it allows you to do dual booting be- between Chrome OS and Ubuntu Linux. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, check it out. 
That'll pretty much do it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Just visit us on the web, linux.quicksurf.com. Uh, you can shoot me an email, linux at quickshift.com. Feel free to do so if you uh, have any, if you run across any stories or articles or anything of that nature that you want me to cover on the show. Um, follow me online over at uh, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore bacon. Um, the show notes contain links of everything, uh, all the multitude of ways of following me online. So if Twitter doesn't do it for you, there's uh, several other ways you can uh, keep tabs on my comings and goings, as you, if, if you will. Um, and with that, oh, and please do subscribe. Yes, that's important. Whether you're watching on YouTube or blip.tv or if you're actually coming directly to the website and, and downloading via RSS, um, the variety of formats that I have available, please subscribe. Uh, it helps me uh, maintain the show. And, uh, you know, when we have advertisers on the show, the number, uh, the, our audience size pays for my bandwidth bill and all that other stuff. So it's it's greatly appreciated if you... You know, if, if you would subscribe and, and spread the word around and tell everybody about the show, and, you know, that would be much appreciated. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, wrap the show up, and I will see all of you next week. I anticipate another light news week next week since we're rolling into the new year, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can uh, gather up. See ya. Bye.